in my opinion, the biggest star from the Attic Street. I know that uh, when Cena was feuding with The Rock, The Rock got a lot of those monikers, a lot of those titles as being the face of the Attic Street era. Yeah. And maybe we can talk about this uh, briefly. Um, but in my opinion, Stone Cold Steve Austin was the true face of the Attitude Era. If not, it was a co-ownership um, of the face of the Attitude Era between The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin. But it would be the face of the company versus the former face of the company. The two uh, final pillars of the Mount Rushmore in the WWE uh, in terms of chronological order. So I think that uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus John Cena would be a money match. And can I bring this up to you? Because it's, right it's a very controversial topic in my opinion. And uh, I've actually tweeted about this. And now, after watching a lot of WrestleMania Rewinds on the WWE Network, watching a lot of docs about The Rock and uh, stuff of that nature, um, everyone, including The, the Miz, is who comes to my mind, Stephanie McMahon did it, uh, dropped it a couple times too, refer to The Rock as the biggest star of the Attitude Era, uh, just the face of the company yep. in the late 90s. And like, I feel like they're really not doing Stone Cold Steve Austin justice but then you have Mr. McMahon at the 2009 Hall of Fame saying Stone Cold Steve Austin's the greatest superstar of all time. So it's they're very inconsistent with their titles. Whatever's convenient for them. At the time. So if The Rock's going against Roman Reigns, it's the star of the Attitude Era versus the future star. Of star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but if Stone Cold Steve Austin's going versus John Cena, it's you know the, the real star of the Attitude Era versus yeah. the, the current star. So yep. it's, it's, it's confusing to me how they, they, uh, they're not consistent with uh, who they're calling the face, the star, the megastar. And I'd really like, once and for all, to establish, uh, we all know how big Hogan was in the Golden Era. We all know how big Bret Hart was in the new generation. Shawn, yep. Ma Shawn Michaels kind of broke out from the new generation into the Attitude Era, gave the torch to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Steve Austin definitely handed it then to Brock Lesnar, who then left, and John Cena was given the ball then. Yep. Now, where, where does The Rock fit into this? The Rock was a great star. Uh, between Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock, I felt The Rock was more entertaining. I thought The Rock was a completer package. I thought that between the two, uh, The Rock had more credentials, uh, more characteristics of a true WWE superstar. But Stone Cold Steve Austin was persistent, determined, and they both wanted that number one spot. And now we really got to decide, and this might even be a longer process than I'm portraying right now, but we, you and I really have to decide, not not just for us, but for everyone, who is the true star of the Attitude Era? I mean, you got the, the, the glory of the Attitude Era was that you had two guys captaining the ship of the WWE. Yep. Now, I think it's that it's just a unique era in that if, uh, if in the Golden Era you had a star as big as Hulk Hogan, that him and Hogan would be... The face of the ad, uh, the face of the golden era. Yep. Um, it's just it's a it was a unique time period, but I think for once and for all, we really need to establish who was the guy, and I would really like to get your thoughts on that. We'll branch off from there in just a minute, but my thoughts on who was the real star of the Attitude Era, and it all goes back to that fantasy thing on who would be on the Mount Rushmore of wrestling. We can go into an hour discussion on that. Everyone's been talking about it over these last couple of months. And who would take that place? If there were five guys, I would do Cena, Hogan, uh, Cena, Hogan, Austin, and Bruno, Bruno and Rock. If the five guys, I think Bruno needs to be on there too. I think he was the foundation of WWE earlier on. But um, Austin and Rock were on that same level in the Attitude Era. Austin sold more merch. Who was more entertaining? I think the Rock in terms of mic skills and stuff like that. But Austin was in the wrestling world the face of the Attitude Era. Culturally, who was the bigger star? Obviously, The Rock. I mean, if you go to anyone, who, is, who do you know from wrestling? People are either going to say Hulk Hogan or The Rock, for the most part. So, um, I would have to go with Austin if we're talking about wrestling here. But, um, who's more well-known? The Rock. But, I mean, then again, you can have a fucking Jimmy Wang and who goes on to have an all-star A-plus uh, movie career. And, and in WWE, he was nothing. You know what I mean? So, it's really hard to say. But, um, I would have to go with Stone Cold Steve Austin. But in that same note, I want to ask you this, and uh, you kind of mentioned it before, and I'm glad you really brought this up because it you know, goes back to what I was going to say. And I, I, Maybe I'm in the minority on this one, but do you want to see a Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Rock match for at WrestleMania 32? To be honest, that's a, that's a difficult question, and I think that some things are best left untampered with. Thank you. And that that trilogy is, you're never going to have something as beautiful, artistic, theatrical, 
you're never going to have something that great yep. again in the WWE. And there's no reason to go back and at all tamper with the legacy of those two guys. That rivalry, in my opinion, you can go back and watch any of the WWE docs on the network and how they'll say that Austin McMahon's the greatest rivalry in WWE history. In my opinion, uh, Austin Rock's the greatest rivalry in WWE history. And I don't believe that there's any reason at their current age, if they were 10 years younger, maybe go for it. But at their current age, there's no reason to go back and tamper with that rivalry. 11, 12, 13 years later, I don't think it's necessary. The matches would no, you know, be nowhere near what they were back in the day. I mean, Cena and Austin is different because it's something new. It's something fresh we haven't seen before. You can't compare it to what it used to be. But with Austin and Rock, it's a completely different nature. And that Rock isn't what it used to be. And Austin is not what it used to be. So I think, like you said before, having that three-match series, having Austin win, Austin win, Rock win that last one, and the final words exchanged between the two on his way out, I thought were beautiful. You don't really need to tamper with that, as you said. So, any more thoughts on the Austin Rock well, thing? Especially after WrestleMania 30, how these guys are just hugging in the ring. Just yeah. Being, but there's no heat for them. There, there would be no. There's really no reason. Logical, um, no logical reason to do that. So. I think the only reason why I could think why they would do it, not only because it's a money matchup, and that's just because it's a money matchup doesn't mean you should always do it. That's not always the case. But um, like a one more thing, well, you know, give it our last try. Just one more time. But they did that at WrestleMania 19. That was their one more time, one last time. Rock needs to get this win. They both got wins over each other. There's really no reason for them to face off. So I really see no reason why they should face off. Maybe it's because we didn't grow up in the attitude there. Maybe that's why our, our views are a bit different. Maybe the people that grew up there are more nostalgic part another Ross, a, a toward another Austin and Rock match. Maybe that's why they want to see another one, but I just personally do not, do not want to see that. And you you did, uh, with finality, confirm that Stone Cold, in your opinion, is the bigger star of the Attitude Era. Now, I know selling merch is a big credential in the WWE, but look at uh, in-ring and the, the overall resume of the two guys. Who won more world titles? I don't think winning more... Right, more just, just humor me. The yeah. Rock. All right. Who won more matches at WrestleMania? I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. I can't the, tell you off the top of my head. That would be The Rock. Okay. Right, look at The Rock's WrestleMania resume. I, and I've said this before. Hulk Hogan. Uh, Stone, Stone Cold, Cold Steve Austin. Austin John, John Cena. Cena. What more do you need? <coughs> I mean, that right there is, in of itself, just the, probably the greatest WrestleMania resume out there, other than The Undertaker. <coughs> yeah, exactly. One, one of the greatest WrestleMania resume. Those... Uh, on your Mount Rushmore, those are three. Those are three. And guys he's you beating had. them all. Uh, in, unless you want Rock to go beat the shit out of Bruno San Martino, <laughs> yeah. there, he, there's no one left for him to beat. He's yeah. beat the top guys. Yep. Stone, Stone Cold beat the Rock twice. He's never faced Hogan. He's never faced Cena. In fact, he lost at WrestleMania 19, and then that, and, and, like I, I, I know, I know. There's no way. There's no reason to go and look at their like. There's stats and things of that nature, but I just think that, um, statistically, <laughs> I'm sorry about this. The go ahead. The, the Rock is the bigger star. The big. I'm a Rock guy, so I'm trying. To He's say. wearing a Rock shirt as we as I'm we speak. I'm a Rock guy. Just bring it. Just bring it. So, I, I don't know. I think that it's a very. It's not. I don't think it's as easy as saying, "Oh, well, the Stone, Stone Cold, uh, you know, brought a beer truck into the the Raw Arena and he." Drove a Zamboni and got arrested. Like, I don't think it's as easy as doing, oh, well, Stone Cold's bigger because he sold more merch. I think that you really have to dive deep into their, their illustrious rivalry and, and see who the bigger star was. I think there's a big difference between the quest, and we talked about this before, who's the fa who was the face of the Attitude Era and who's the better overall performer, entertainer. Because like you said in the past, and I know you said this after watching the docs and whatnot, Rock could go as a babyface and a heel. Austin has always wanted to be heel, but that heel run in 2001 failed. He could only work as a as that rebellious babyface, you know, from the Attitude Era. From that entire Attitude Era, he was a rebellious babyface, with the exception of his earlier on in his career, and he had to turn babyface after his you know match with Bret Hart. So overall, I'm not going to see who the better performer is. I think you might say The Rock, and I might have to agree with that. But with that being said, I think the face of the Attitude Era would have to be Austin, in terms of more involved and more top-tier storylines, and The Rock took over when Austin got injured. And like you, you said this before as well, when Austin got injured, that kind of took away from his some of his time at the top and his feud with Mr. McMahon and whatnot. But Rock, um, you know, took the ball and ran with it from, what, 1999 and 2000 maybe? 
uh, from when he, you know, when when Stone Cold was still out of the equation. So absolutely, I would say, I, I still think that Austin is a bigger star, but overall better performer, like you said, with the titles wins and stuff like that. I might have to go with The Rock. 